Okay, back to where we are. So we are talking about the HTML color. An HTML color has to be with X values, and the X values are written in six numbers starting with hash sign. So if you want to talk about the black color, we use this number zero zero. Then we have FX color. Then for us to also understand better, X values are written in, in are written as six digit numbers starting with a hash sign. So letters used in a hexadecimal digit may be uppercase or lowercase. Are you together? So what we mean by maybe uppercase or lowercase is you can either write it like this or you write it like this. Just make sure it's six digit number. So we can either write it that way. So to add color to text elements, we are always using the style attribute. The style attribute. In our last class, we actually talked about the style attribute. This is it right here. The style attribute, this is it. The style attribute. This is this one's where we open the style, and this is where we close the style. So right here. So now, to open the style hybrid books now, we have something of this here, style, and we close it here. So we now have our div. We said it's division, that is a container or selection. We talked about it in our last class. So now we have opened the style, we are given a background color of this, and we give the a choice color of this. And we are now giving, let's give this a pattern. All this we are going to understand very well once we get to CSS, every 22 pieces. So we leave it that way. Now, for us to now call out to use this style in our text, your style, this style we open, can be inside our body or be inside the head. It's still going to do the same thing. So. Is it going to do the browser? We recognize it. Now inside our body, let's not call it out. So we just say div. So what we just have to do is we just, we just call it out by saying div. Do you understand? Remember the name of our style is div. I just call it out by div. And uh, let's just this is a paragraph. This is Basis, Now let's run this in our browser. Let's run this in our browser. Let's run this in our browser. So this is it. You can see now. We give it a background color. Let's also want to give it a new background color. Let's also want to give it a new background color. Let's see what's gonna happen. Let's see what's gonna happen right here. Product color, let's use 000, 000, 000, 000, 000. This means black. Now let's save it and let's check out our browser. So let's reload. You can see we have black color. So this is how the HTML colors work. So these are the HTML colors work. This is how it works, this is how it works. Then if actually we still want to make use of this HTML color in, uh, in, the, in our lines of code, we can still make use of it. We just say like this, this style, we've actually done it before. 
fish dye, just call out the color that we just call it color. You can any color, any color that we want. I use it. H E P A dot two. So you look. There is another way of adding to text. So we close our P. That's safe. Now let's check our browser. Let's check our browser. We can see. We can see now. Here's another way of adding colors. So these colors we're having right here is a color that we share that we had it to read here. Yeah. And remember, it was able to take our black background because we still had inside this uh, tag. You can see, you open the tag here, you open the tag right here, you come here to close it. If you have this text about this tag, it will definitely not going to take the background color that is being added here. I hope you get that. So that is that on how on how it works. So now, for us to understand HTML color names, to color to color the text elements using HTML color name, we have to put the name of the color either blue or white or whatever. Are we together? That is, if we have, maybe you don't know the color that you want to use. Instead, it is the name that you know. Let's just add it here. Let's just uh, let's, let's add a number. So let's just change it here. It is the name you know. I just go in there and put the name. Let's use a, uh, let's put blue, blue color, and uh, let's say this one to be white. Do you understand? And let's just save it. Now let's check out our browser and see what we have here. Let's see. Can you see? You can see now. So, you can either write it using the hex decimal value or you write it using the color names. It's actually going to work. It's going to work. Then using the RGB value as well. To add a color to the text element, we have to use the style elements. You know that already. So where we put the color is where we are going to put the RGB. Remember, remember I told I said RGB colors. It ranges from zero to two five five. Two five five. It ranges from zero to two five five, and it uh is an X triplet that represents three separate value. Three represent three separate value. So I will remember that the colors are of six. So we can use it the way we want. For example. We can use an RGB color of, let's see, let's see this. Can use an RGB color here. So right here, where you are here, you just write RGB. Open and close bracket. Then you are going to start putting the color, follow with comma. Are you, are we together? I'll say 25, comma, 112. So this is it. Then the same thing goes to color as well now. Just going to write R G B. Open our close bracket. Open our close bracket. That is 159. 159. 159. 159. So you can have it this way and save it. Now let's see what's happening with. Our browser. Sorry. Can you see now? So this is. So if if you try to 
So change this as a reverse. One six zero. Let's see the color that's going to give us. That's going to give us. Let's see the color that will give us. Oh, see the color that's give us. So this is the way of RGB. This is how to go with RGB. RGB. This is how to go with RGB. So I'm going to give us some of colors that we can use as in the X value and the RGB value. I'm going to give it to us. So I'm going to send it to the group for us. So that brought us to the end of HTML column. So now we are going to talk about HTML tables. HTML tables. Let's talk about HTML table. All right, let me let me drop let me drop this to all single the group first. Okay. Let me drop the HTML color saying we go. So, if you are to look at it, I've dropped a lot of details about it for us in the group. And also, we can as well Google search and search list of HTML colors. You will see a lot of colors which they are uh, with their X value, their color name, and their RGB value. We are going to see that. So, that brought us to the end of HTML colors. So now let's not talk about tables. Let's talk about table, HTML tables. HTML tables is very, very important. Next lesson is HTML tables. <clears throat> so we are done right here. H1, HTML, So talking about HTML table, in HTML, you can create tables for your website using the table tag in conjunction with 
TL, TD, and TH tags. We can create a table using the TL, TD, ICDD, and T, we can TH, uh, and TH tags. So all this works line in line with the table tag. So here is the table tag. Here is the table tag. So the HTML tag table allows us to display the data, e.g. images, text, link, and so on and so forth in columns and rows of cells, just like our spreadsheet, our spreadsheet that's Excel, Excel format. As we are seeing those columns and row, we can do that using table tag in HTML. If you see, if you visit any website and you are seeing a tabular form, that particular page is designed using the table tags. So table table rows can be grouped into a head, foot, body section through the T head and the T foot. That is table head and table foot and T body element tag, which is T body. That's table body. So in HTML5 now, we can place T foot either before or after the T body tag. They must come after any captions that we have inside our table, inside our table. I don't know if you are together. Okay, this English I'm saying, let me drop it for us. Let me drop it for us. Okay, I dropped it already. So now, what are the symptoms of table? So these are the symptoms of table. The table tag comes in pairs. The content is written between the opening tag and the closing tag. The opening tag and the closing tag. This is what I'm trying to say. It comes in pairs. So the content is written between the opening and closing terms. I hope it's something we found that start before the closing terms. So this is this. see the opening right here. And here is the closing tag. So it is written using that. So as, as we said, that the tables comes in pairs. So what are the pairs of table? We always have, we always having this. Vector, vector. We always have table. Then we always have CR, which is table row. Then we have TT, which is table column. Are you with me? Then sometimes we used to have TH, which is table head. So whatever you want to have in your head, <coughs> for example, let's say email, then once you are done with that, you close it with, a, with your with the closing tag, it is TH. So mail, let's open another head and call it female, TH. Are you, are you together? So once you're done with that, then we are going to close our row. That's the, uh, that is one row like that. So now let's open another row. Using TR, 
which is a form for another. Uh, so the first, our first edge main, we are going to have, we are not going to have the column for that. We already have one column here. We just call it precious. And you're going to close your column. Then you open another CD, which is for 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 me. First one is no. Let's use let's use a maker. Let's use a maker. Then the last one here, let's use precious. So we know that precious is a female. Are we together? So if you are done with that, then we close our our row, which is our T row. Then after closing our row, then we will now close our table. So the closing tab. Then once we are done, we close our we close our table. Now let's reload, let's save it and check it out in our browser. So let's check that in the browser. Hey, you can see this is male, the maker, and this is female, precious. Now this space is not much. So in case we need to add spaces to it, we are just going to add that inside that table by by putting width. That is how how wide the table is going to be. Is what we've learned about. So there is a table. Just come here and say, we're just going to add table style that's using the style element. And we add table style. So what is that I want to use is width. That is how big it's going to be. So let's give it 90%. So let's give the 90% pieces. You see? So let's save it. Now let's check our browser. Let's reload. Okay. We have a mail. Something is wrong. Okay, I think I don't know how it is. Table style. Where's the table? So you have to be conversant with the styles you are using and, and how it's being displayed and function. That's being displayed and function. So all those ones are ones we have to put in place. Okay, let's try and put in place so we can look at spaces. Uh, that's not a good space. <laughs> okay, it's out there. Yes, I do. So that's just how that aspect goes. That's just how that aspect goes like that. So that is table. That is how table goes. So you can try and add and it's add, add a border to the table. So instead of also doing this one after the other, we can actually have it 
in our code by simply writing the style. By simply writing the style. The style. Yeah, let's put the style. So here, we are just going to write the name of the uh, table, comma, th. I don't know if you're getting C is comma C D. Then you open our plus parentheses. Then let's give it a border. Let's give it uh, two pixels. Give it two pixels in a solid block. So we can have it like this and save it. We can have it like that and save it. So let's check out our value. You can see we added two pixels. That's why we have it this way. We added it this, this way. This way. So that's why we have it that way. That's why we have it that way. So we have it that way. So this is how it works. This is how it works. And we can we can always style our table anyhow we want it. We can always style our table anyhow we want it. So Let's move to blocks. That's HTML blocks. This inline element and and the rest of the HTML blocks. HTML blocks. Okay. Let me let me end this these tables. So this section. So because I don't know, I might not be able to finish the blocks within the little time frame that is here. But let's let's go. Let's I should be able. I should be able. So HTML blocks. Where is our work? Okay. Jesus. HTML blocks. Yes, it. So HTML is composed is composed of different elements that creates blocks for web pages. So these elements are divided into block level elements and inline elements. It is possible to change an element from block 
to inline or vice versa using the CSS, like the, the way CSS is being displayed. So what is block element? A block element in an HTML that starts on the new line and takes up the full available width of its parent element horizontal space. Are we together? So the majority of HTML elements are block level elements. And these block level elements are used within the HTML body of an HTML document. Are we together? So examples of it is <clears throat> you can have your HTML, HTML lines. For example, let's see this. So we can have the block, the block element like this. This is a block element <clears throat> that has been written. So and if you do not try to check out our browsers and see what they what we have, you can see what it gives us. You can see this is what our block element gives to us. This is what our block elements gives to us. So block element is that <clears throat> it's used, it is written it is written in the body of an HTML element and can contain inline elements element as well. So a block element there are some 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 tags for block elements. Part of them is where we have the diff, we have the list, we have the other list, the uh, table foot, the table head, the footer, the form, the navigations, aside and the rest of them. We have it. So when it comes to inline elements, unlike the block level elements, inline elements do not start on a new line. They begin within a line. It's as much read as it is necessary. So inline elements can include as a part of the main text. Are we together? They can include as a part of the main text. We call this an inline. We can call this an inline element. Let me see from our previous show. Okay, this particular one right here. This particular one right here can be called an inline element. So this particular one can be called inline elements because the style is not written in a new line like this one. Are we together? It's being written in between the HTML document. That's why it's called an inline element. Are we together? So that is that about inline element. Let's see if we can see what's going to give us. I don't know what is actually going to. This is what inline elements gives to us. And right here is the block element. Below here is the inline element. So that is it. So that is it. So we're moving to the next section. We're moving to the next section. <clears throat> 